Cinematic renders look good when they have some kind of depth. You can't get that without realism. So first of all, try to add realism to your scene. To achieve it, you have to use high quality assets and textures, which instantly add realism. And I won't recommend you to create your own realistic assets. The best way is to use photo scanned assets. You can find high quality textures from Ambient CG and Polyhaven. And you can get high quality photo scanned assets from Megascans. I have made a lot of videos on how to use these. You can watch all of those after this video. You can notice that I have used high quality assets in all of my renders. Even the toy has imperfections like fingerprints. The more chaos, the more better. You can find imperfections from Megascans. Add these into the roughness of your material and add a color ramp for control. Using high quality assets will help you because they have so much detail and depth. For this skin, I have used a paid add-on, but it is worth it because it adds so much realism. Now after that, if you have an outdoor scene, you can add depth by using fog. Just add a cube that covers your scene. And in the shader editor, add a volume scatter node and change the density to something low. You can also use my free starter pack, from which you can drag a volume scatter cube. I wouldn't recommend doing this with a close-up shot. However, you can add dust and more effects in the post-production stage. I have talked about it in the post-production chapter. After this, try to add snow or rain. You can use particles for that. But if you have a static camera, you can use videos like these to add it quickly. I have talked more about it in the chapter four. Before lighting your scene, it is better to add your camera. Press Shift plus A and add a camera. You can also use my starter pack, which have camera presets with predefined settings for cinematic renders. Press zero on your number pad or just click this camera icon. On the top left, click on View, go into Navigation, and right-click the Walk Navigation and add a shortcut. I use Shift plus F because it was in the old versions, and I am used to it. Now when you press the shortcut, you will get controls like a game. You can move with arrow keys and move mouse to rotate. You can adjust mouse wheel to control the speed. There are a lot of camera angles and settings, but I am going to tell you what I have used in these renders. For the close-up shot, I have moved the camera near to the eye, and I have rotated it a little bit. For this scene, I have used low-angle camera, where you rotate the camera upward for a wide look. I have added this website link where you can find all of the camera angles. After that, if you are using the camera from my preset, these settings will be already there, in the focal length option. If your scene is about an environment of outdoor exterior, Use 25 mm focal length, and if it is a close-up, use high focal lengths like 100 mm. If you scroll down, there will be depth of field settings. Only use these for close-up shots and avoid it for wide shots. On the top right, go into this menu and enable depth of field for viewport. Now in the camera settings, you can directly select your object or play with the distance until you get good results. Change the blades to eight, ratio to two, and play with the f-stops these are the settings I have used. A bonus tip for exterior shots, if you change this to panoramic and set the lens value similar to the focal length, which is 25 in my case, you can get this fisheye effect. And to avoid these black bars, just increase this to 360. Also try to use cinematic ratio, which is 1920 by 800. You can also use compositor to add lens flare and distortion. You can use my lens flare node from my starter pack to quickly add it, or you can just add a glare node and lens distortion node. Set the glare to fog glow and high settings. Change the lens distortion to 0.01. Cinematic lighting is very simple. All you have to do is just understand one concept, and that is to avoid adding the light from the front. Let's start with this shot. You can see I have added a plane from the side and at the back, no light is in the front. 
Even when it's animated, you can see the light never comes in front. First, try to add a light from back. You can use area lights for that. Make sure you get this kind of highlight. If you select this option, you can move it on the x-axis like this. After that, try to add another light from the side. You will already see the cinematic effect. If this side is too dark, you can use a point light with low intensity to add little bit of light. You can also add a light on top. Just remember the rule, never add it in the front. For this human close-up shot, I have used an area light. I have tried to add the light on the other side of the camera. To remove this darkness, I have used a point light with low intensity and that's it. You can also do one more thing to make lights look more good. Check use nodes, add a black body node and change the temperature to whatever you like from these values. Use 2400 for a warm light and 6000 for cold light. I would recommend you not to use black body for now as you will color grade in the post-production. Now in the final chapter, I am going to use an external software. You can use Premiere Pro or any other software as the concept is same. Let's start with adding effects. So if your camera was static, you can add snow, rain, or any other effect on top. You can get videos like these from RenderCrate. Just add it on top of your clip. Change the blend mode to screen or brighten and reduce the opacity. You can do the same for dust and rain. Now for the final sauce, color grade your renders. I mainly use two adjustments layers. You can get these from the link in the description. These are completely free. First add the dark one and reduce its intensity to adjust the darkness. And then add the, the deep green on top. I usually keep it at 50%. And in the end, change the ratio to 16 by nine to get cinematic black bars and add some grain and sharpness. Now before ending the video, I want to tell you one final thing. If you are doing an animation, use sound effects. Just look at this clip without sound effects. Now look at it with sound effects. You can get sound effects from Pixabay. And if you once understand how to use sound effects correctly, then your animations will get to the next level. And that's it. Thanks for watching till the end. It would be great if you subscribe and follow me on Instagram.